how should schools select their pupils? By their ability or by how close they live to the classroom? It's being talked about again because two girls' grammar schools in South London want to cut back on the number of places for local children to allow pupils who are doing well to attend from further away. We'll hear from both sides of the argument very soon, but first, here's Mark Ashdown. Science for some of the most gifted girls, not just in Sutton, but in the whole country. Wallington High ranks among the top 50. Not surprising, then, it's oversubscribed. Most are still from the local area, perhaps not for long. I don't think you ever find a perfect admissions policy anywhere, but we do believe ours is fair. We do believe that it will offer opportunities for a diverse um, range of very clever girls to be able to access this education, no matter what their social background. But not necessarily from the catchment area. Wallington's yearly intake is 180 pupils. All have to pass a test. But currently, 130 places are reserved for local children. Next year, that could be cut to just 60. It's only possible because of recent changes by the government to the school's admissions code. Well, a spokesman for the department told us that when it comes to grammar schools, the code is now very clear. No child should be guaranteed a place based on where they live. So Wallington's proposals are perfectly legal, as long as they fully consult with parents. But that's where it gets a bit tricky. At a nearby primary, these are the parents who'll need convincing. Access to good schools like Wallington, still a major factor in why many moved here. I think local kids should get first choice, really. I don't think it should go outside. I don't think, I don't think it's fair at all. There's plenty of schools around. Everybody goes up in arms about it, and last year everybody was just pulling their hair out, not knowing whether their kids have got places or not. I'm fiercely proud of the grammar schools here in Sutton, and they, they really provide the spine of uh, our record as the best educational authority in the country. But it's important that whilst we don't reduce standards, that we give every opportunity for Sutton's children to go to Sutton schools. Like Rebecca Romero, the Olympic gold medalist born close by and schooled at Wallington High. No doubt a few may follow in her footsteps, though soon there might be no guarantee there'll be locals too. Mark Ashdown, BBC London News. Well, we'll hear from Alan Carter from the Campaign for State Education in a moment. Uh, good evening. But first, let's go to Robert McCartney uh, from the National Grammar Schools Association. Um, these schools already choosing pupils by their ability. They still serve the community. What's to be gained from going more elite with, with more selection? Well, I think there are two principles. The first one is equality of opportunity based on merit. And the second one is parental choice. Um, some of the people who send their children to grammar schools are under criticism because it's a postcode lottery. They buy houses in the area of the good grammar school. Uh, this, is, this is a criticism that you buy your place. At the same time, one has to agree that there may be children outside the area who are very bright, may come from economically disadvantaged families, who nevertheless should have an opportunity on merit. But what does the, what does the gain school gain from going more selective? What exactly does it get from that? Well, I think what it does, it, presumably, it wishes to raise uh, the, the quality of its students. Uh, the higher the merit, the more likely they are to produce very good results. And after all, the whole ethos of the grammar school is academic excellence and achievement. And they do better in league tables, of course. You're talking from Northern Ireland, where grammar schools are being phased out, I believe. Well, that, that's there, hardly there, no, a ringing endorsement, is it? No, there is an attempt to phase them out. We have 69 grammar schools in Northern Ireland. We send 42.5% of our students to university from the lower income groups okay. against 28% from the comprehensive system in England. Robert McCartney, stay with us. Um, Alan Carter, you're from the Campaign for State Education. There you are, you heard it, grammar schools are good for all pupils. Um, I'm afraid the academic evidence totally contradicts that. If you look at the report by Professor David Jesson in 2001, he looked at the performance of children in Kent, which is a fully selective area in England, and what he discovered was that the average performance of all children in Kent was significantly lower than that of a comparative area which was fully comprehensive. OK, well, let me put it another way. Houses close to good schools in London, we all know this, mm. houses close to good schools in a good catchment area cost a lot more money. Yep. 
Isn't it better to just have selection on ability? Um, I think selection on ability is doing damage for all children. The best thing for these schools to do would be to become comprehensive schools, use their excellent teachers to raise the overall standards of all children. Let's go back to Robert McCartney. Uh, cherry picking the best pupils is harmful to those who well, struggle. I, I think that is absolute nonsense. For example, uh, statistics show that in 2006, 164 grammar schools produced in the difficult subjects, A to B, the same number of results in maths, chemistry, uh, English, physics, the same results as 1,500 okay. comprehensive schools. There you are, better results, Alan. Um, you can't compare it across the average. If you compare the top 25% of children in comprehensives with the same cohort in grammar schools, the answer is comparable. Comprehensives serve all children. Their average performance is bound to be lower. But their average performance is better than in areas which are fully selective. We'll have to leave it there. Robert McCartney and Alan Carter, thank you thank very you much very for much. joining us this evening. Thank you.